All right, welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant Badass, and today we are going to do what you all have been asking me to do. I have been getting a million questions. Dude, what's up with the truck, bro? So, okay, we'll talk about the truck. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is an 89 Suburban, okay? Uh, back in the day when they made the square body, uh, they made Suburbans as well. And uh, I tell you what, you got your K5s and then you got this thing, all right? Same stuff underneath, same stuff under the hood. Uh, the only difference is um, versus having a few passengers, I can fit eight comfortably, um, maybe nine, ten, something like that. And then you got the back section back there and I can fit more. So I have a lot more room and I also have a whole section back there for gear and we're going to get into all that stuff. I'm going to show you what I have in it. And we're going to go over it. And uh, I'll talk about the winch and full drive and all the jazzy stuff with you guys. So let's just get into it. Come on. Alright, we're going to unlock it and crawl inside. Alright, so I'll keep this thing locked up. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I keep this thing locked up. I don't want anyone trying to pry into it and play with it. Uh, let me set my stuff away. Now, everything you see from the bumpers, these bumpers are handmade. This, uh, this came off a Chevy van, and all I did was chop it down so that I could crawl up onto the Defender roof rack. The Defender roof rack's there for multiple reasons. Um, I can camp up there. A queen size bed will fit in it. That's how big it is. It'll fit a queen size bed. And uh, you can you can set a tent up there if you want to. Crawl up and down from here. I don't need to do that fancy swing out crap that the Jeeps do. I just crawl on top and I can go to bed if I want to. Or I can crawl inside and sleep. Because uh, the seats come out of this thing and you can fit a full, uh, you can fit a king size bed inside. But this is all these bumpers are handmade. Just want to tell you that. Now my stoppage is my fender, so I have to be careful. All right. Let's see if you can get a good view of that. I'll move out of the way real quick. Okay, so uh, you can pan in now if you want, just a little bit. Sippy Cup's my camera camera operator today. All right, uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, a lot of you are coming over. Uh, I know uh, Pastor Joe Fox sent you over. Uh, he's a good man, and uh, uh, Sippy Cup and I. We really do appreciate him giving us a shout out, and I just want to say that. And uh, one day we will meet up, and hopefully we'll do a video together. We'll have a dual video. That'd be cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. And uh, but anyway, um, anyone coming in to the channel for the first time, I just want to say uh, community rules. Okay, treat everyone like humans first. Uh, so uh, no fighting, no biting. Okay, so let's just. Keep it friendly, everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoy the channel. All right. Okay. Let's get into this ridiculous thing. So, behind this, if you're familiar with old Chevys, you can disconnect this or this. This will swing. This will swing forward if you need it to. Or you can disconnect. You hear the songs? Kids' toys three kids lots of toys all right so you can disconnect this and fold that and this will flip up and go forward but this is where I like to keep uh, I keep a stroller just in case I need it and redneck bug out bag that's another thing I want to say uh, if you're not familiar with the bug out bags that we do on the channel um, I have military acronyms I like to give them because I'm crazy um, 
but that was the redneck bug out bag. It's called the R-Bob, okay? Um, uh, Sippy Cup in her car, she has the S-Bob. That is the Santa bug out bag. We have different bug out bags. Uh, the T-Bob is in uh, the Forerunner, and uh, we make these different bug out bags for different reasons. So, but this is the R-Bob. And sleeping bags, sleeping bags, and there's more sleeping bags up there. It's just in case you have to split, you got sleeping bags, you got something to sleep in. But if you take the if you take the rear seat out, um, a four wheeler will fit in here. We've actually uh, we've actually shoved a dirt bike in here too. Uh, a couple, I think about three dirt bikes will fit back here. All right, this is a this is a full uh, trauma, extreme trauma first aid kit. Uh, all sorts of medical gear are, is in here. I wanted easy access to it. I wanted to either be able to crawl to the back and grab it or I could just flip the door open and grab it. Uh, in here, one of my favorite zombie tools. But yeah, this is great for uh, roofing or house destruction or whatever you need to do. Pry bar, something to beat on something with. You can crack a skull with that, whatever you wanna do. Then in here I keep a spare emergency flashlight. One of the big ones, not one of the little ones. I don't want to leave that like that. All right. All right. This is my winch system, okay? This all goes to my winch. Uh, this is my controls for my winch. Uh, right here. These are my tree cables, okay? Now, if you're using a winch, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do the tree cables for you guys today because I don't want to break them apart. But uh, get yourself some uh, heavy duty tie down straps. You take the tie down strap, you put it around the tree or whatever object you're trying to tug on, and use this for what you're tugging on. That way you don't kink your cable. Because a winch cable, you don't want to go wrapping it around stuff. That's not how that works. Because you're going to break your cable, you're going to screw it up. And uh, if you're running a winch, don't use uh, synthetic cables. I've had bad experiences with synthetic cables. They break, they dry rot, they go bad. You might get about uh, about another uh, another few yards out of one. My, uh, my cable I have, you can take good care of it. If you take good care of it, um, you'll be able to use that over and over again for years and years and years uh, without any problems whatsoever if you take good care of a cable uh, but with the synthetic uh, it'll it'll snap break dry rot all sorts of stuff they don't hold the weight and they definitely don't hold the weight they're not they're not where I, for the price you pay it's not worth it seems like cheaper is better when it comes to cables but I got about 80 feet on my winch cable we'll get into this I'm gonna leave it open because I'm gonna show you how the winch works all right we'll get over here in here, jumper cables and other items that I can use for the truck uh, to save the day. All right, uh, this is just spare rags and stuff for my hands. If I have to work on something greasy, I kind of want to wipe my hands off. These are the tubes that go to my jerry cans. Okay, I just leave them hanging here in case I need to use one. They're both full. I keep them both full. All right. Spare oils, that's one thing I always do. I keep some extra trans fluid, power steering fluid, brake fluid, uh, motor oil, and I have, I just dropped that. Anyway, let's keep going. A uh, whole bunch of tools, right? All my tools, uh, here you want to beam in there real quick. So, if I move this stuff out of the way. Tools, spare parts, spare hoses, uh, Spare zip ties, these are the heavy duties, lightweight ones. Uh, in here, in these little pockets here, I keep sockets and uh, wrenches, screwdrivers, T-handle, all that good stuff. All right. So I don't put all this stuff back, I'll do it in a minute. All right. 
we'll get to that in a minute. Damn right. It's all off the Okay. Guys, girls, children of all ages, ages, let's go around this way. Okay. Take you for a tour. Okay, so in this inside here. Now, when I got this truck, okay, so overall this is a four thousand dollar truck. You're like, yeah, put a helmet on. This is a four thousand dollar truck. The wheels and tires that were on here when I bought this truck. I sold. I sold them. I took the money and recycled the money. Um, I don't know what they were thinking, but the wheels they had on here, it was in the 20 inch range. And uh, so basically what I did was I sold the wheels and tires. I sold some of the junk that they had on this thing when I bought it, sold all that crap, sold it, took the money that I made from that. And now you have this. Okay. So that's how I recycled. All right. So I didn't go buy a truck and then go buy a thousand dollars worth of rims okay so these tires these tires and wheels are going to be much better because this is a 15 inch rim and it's not a 20 inch rim and how often are you going to find some 20 inch mud tires that are not a million dollars the further you move away the louder i have to talk i'm going to be yelling she's too driving me nuts right now oh man sippy cup say hi Hi. <laughs> you, she has to mess with me. She has to do it. All right. All right. Anyway, 15 inch rims. It's going to be a lot easier for me to find tires versus having some 20 inch gangster rims and stuff on a truck. All right. This is, this is a truck. Okay. Not a car. All right. Here we go. You ready? Mm-hmm. Ready? Mm-hmm. Locked. Oh, bum, bum, bum. Here. Hang on. Okay, so inside here, you want to pan in there real quick? Excuse the mess. Excuse the mess. Three kids. Yeah, and that's how that's how comfortably full three full size car seats will fit. And then we have a whole nother bench back there. We could put three more if we wanted to. So it's just good to have. But this is the this is the family vehicle. This isn't. Uh, what most people think it is. Sure, you could bug out in it if you wanted to. I mean, hell, you could probably push a train with this thing. Uh, like I said, 488 gears, man. Uh, uh, it's got a strong motor. Uh, it's a 350 small block, uh, four speed. So it's got uh, it's got overdrive. All right, now yeah, up here, come on. So, let me see the camera real quick. So now, inside here, I keep controls. This is for my lights all up top. And then uh, down here, I keep a CB radio. Right here is where I hang it. And um, there's, okay, so the reason why I have a CB radio. All right, I keep a CB radio in each one of my vehicles. Uh, you can hold this real quick. But, but anyways, I keep a CB radio in each one of my vehicles. Hello. Yes, I keep a PA system too. You are watching Step One Survival. All right. So I keep a CB in each one of my vehicles. Um, so I can communicate with other people. I can communicate, communicate with truck drivers. And believe it or not, there are a lot of preppers that are truck drivers. 
Uh, I talk to them all the time on the CB radio when I'm trucking down the road. I'm always chatting it up with them. I chat, I chat it up with people in my neighborhood just off my CB radio alone. Even cafes have uh, CB radios at the truck stops. Yes, they do. And uh, we were passing by a cafe one day, and uh, I was just messing with them. I had it on the right channel. I just said, hey, what's on the menu? And they started shouting, well, we got bologna. So, no, what was it? Chicken. They were having some chicken and some stuff. And I said, I want a barbecued bologna sandwich. And she says, I think I could scratch that up for you. You just stop on by. I said, man, God bless. You know what? That's awesome. But anyway, I have a CB radio for multiple reasons, for communication. And I have one in each one of my vehicles. And uh, they can all be disconnected and removed if I need to remove one. I also have a, a setup so that I can run it inside the house. Because believe it or not, there's people in their houses here that talk on CB radios. Okay. Let's go right in front. Yes, it has a snorkel. And I get this all the time, okay? Look, they don't make a snorkel for this thing. I'm going to tell you right now. This is from an 80s model. Uh, Dante's Peak. Shut your mouth, Dante's Peak. Yeah, Dante's Peak was awesome, and that truck was awesome. This is the Dante's Peak truck, pretty much. But anyway, this snorkel came from an 80s FJ, okay? Remember that, 80s FJ. If you want to put one of these on your truck, now I had to use a heat gun and manipulate it, okay, because it did not fit. Uh, and it's not going to. You're going to have to manipulate it a little bit with a heat gun. That's what I did. That's how I got it to fit. Um, the reason why I put my high lift jack on the roof there's a reason behind it. When you flip a vehicle and you want to flip it back over, <laughs> I've done it before, <laughs> you're going to need to put your high lift jack on your hood because if this thing tilts over on its back, you can't get to your high lift jack if it's in the back. Uh, nine times out of ten, that usually does happen where it lands on its butt. Um, then if you've got it too far in the front, you're not going to be able to get to it because there's something blocking it, barriers. But the one place that you can put it where you can always get to it is the hood. Because no matter which way it flips and rolls and tilts, you can still get to that high lift jack. And that's how I flip my vehicle over if I have to, if I ever did flip it over. Alright. Now, this, this is all handmade. Every bit of this is made by hand. Alright, let's get that out of the way. Alright, this is just a super winch. Uh, the 10,000. Alright, you got different types of levers here for people get confused. Alright, they buy these things for the vehicles and they have no idea how to operate them. And there's engage, there's disengage. So you can disengage it by turning it, but for me, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to work it out a little bit. We're doing this video so great. You stop it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I got my connection plug here. And one thing you want to know about using a winch, okay? There's so many different things, and people get confused. They buy a winch for their brand new truck. Uh, some people just buy them. They have no use for them. They don't even know if they're going to ever use them. And it's fine. It's fine if you're going to buy a winch, and you don't know if you're ever going to use one or not. But uh, I just want to talk about it real quick because uh, using your winch, for one, protecting it from the weather, that's what I do. I keep it covered up all the time. I'm not trying to show it off. I don't want anybody to... It's a tool. This is a tool. It's a tool that can save my life or save somebody else's life, okay? Uh, I can use this for so many different things. I, it's endless, okay? It's endless, the stuff you could use a winch for. All right. Now, you could disengage this. If I, want, if I wanted to, I could just disengage this. But today, I'm going to... Uh, if, <clears throat> if you want to go out, you just loosen it. Just like that. So I usually push it in there pretty good. Then you just grab. Just like that. All right. Uh, now at this point, you could. Uh, all right. So you flip around. Ah, just like that. Now it free spins. Okay. Now I can set this down. All right. Come here real quick. Point me. So now I can set that down and I can pull this guy out if I want to, alright? That's how that works. 
Now, just lay it down however you want. Now, when you're done, all right, come here. I see I turn the knob forward, right? So I turn the knob forward, and now it's disengaged, right? So I can just pull it out if I want to and run to the vehicle. So instead of having to use this so I don't waste my battery on it. The thing is, when you're winching somebody out, you need to start your truck. I'm telling you right now, uh, if you're going to start winching, you better start that truck. All right? Hang on a second. take this and I can engage it in full wheel drive if I want to uh, before I do my lockers or or I can turn my lockers before I turn my full wheel drive on it does not matter how you do it okay so all you're gonna do is turn it all the way around 
they're kind of stiff. I gotta do it with my right hand. There we go. Alright, see so now it says lock. You're gonna do that on both sides. And then to disengage, it's just like that. Now what happens when it's unlocked, it just free spins, okay? It free spins until you need it. Then when you lock that hub, that hub uh, uh, grabs the shaft in there and you've got a running, basically this is running off the gear now. So now I've got it disengaged and I'm back to normal. But you can do it either or. You can do it before, you can do it after. Doesn't matter how you engage a four wheel drive on a truck like this. Uh, but I had that question too and I just wanted to answer it for me. That's pretty much it. I don't know what else I can say about this truck. Bare bones underneath, nothing crazy. Chrome don't get you home, guys. Uh, you know, black will bring you back. Did that sound right? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> probably did not sound good. Anyway, mm -hmm. but anyway, so underneath the hood, you stop it, Sippy. Stop it right now. All right. So underneath the hood is bare bones. All right, nothing fancy. All right, I don't have chrome headers. I don't have chrome intake, chrome anything. Uh, there's no chrome underneath there. It's just bare bones, GM parts, made in America. This truck was made in Detroit. It was painted in Detroit. It's American made, handmade. Everything on this truck, it works the best it can. And if I need to fix it, I beat the crap out of it. And it gets back on the road again, just like any American, right? Hey, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching SOS, I am Staff Sergeant Badass. And have a wonderful, wonderful day.